is your wife? Are, are they always like laughing and falling out like because you just say something? Can, can she even get angry with you because you're so funny? <laughs> they make her no parent in her mouth. What? Wow. That's not happen. By that time, they don't see you as a comedian anymore. Uh, you just have to see. The thing is, uh, as a comedian, your job is your job. You need to play your role as a husband and as a father. You cannot make a joke with everything. For example, maybe her birthday, I will not start cracking jokes and say, ah, I need to do the needful. I need to make her happy. You understand? Because I tell people that the amount of money you give to your wife determines the pet name she calls you at home. <laughs> yes. Yes, because if your husband, if your wife calls you Papa Chinere, just know you are not doing well. <laughs> yeah. Because the first day I gave my wife 20,000, she gave me a pet name. She called me honey. Okay. When I increased the money, she increased the pet name. <laughs> I gave her 50,000, she now called me honey bunch. <laughs> then the day I gave her 200,000, my wife didn't know when she called me, my lord, I'll pass her <laughs> <figure."> <laughs> And welcome to the Moment Show with Pastor Funke. It is so nice for you to join us today, and I'm also happy to have a studio audience already. Now, if you think your life is too boring to be funny, well, the joke's on you. Humor is all around us. Cultivating more humor in your everyday life is one of the fastest and most powerful ways to ease up the hard times the stress, and is overall good for your health and your well-being. Tony Ebota, fondly called Loud Voice, is a stand-up comedian, compare as well, known for delivering clean, classy, and ethical jokes. He conveys loud and funny concepts held annually in Abuja with recognized comedians and audiences. He has made several skits online with the thousands of viewers in his famous performances as Barrister Tony. Loud Voice has been featured in movies like The Yoruba Demons, a film by AY, and other TV series. He has also founded a charitable NGO called Care, I Care Initiative. Please welcome Loud Voice to the Moment Show. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Loud Voice, for being on the Moment Show. Thank you so much, Ma. Wow, this is a very special honor for us here to have you. And uh, I hope we'll be able to talk about laughter, right? We don't get choice now. We we'll don't. <laughs> it is true. We don't have a choice. We don't have a choice. We don't have a choice. But before we start and we get into the funny stuff, how did you get the name Loud Voice? Uh, I told you for my ex. <laughs> ex. <laughs> yeah, my ex. Yes, my ex girlfriend. Okay. Yeah, uh, she's actually she's a very good Christian. You know, uh, she wears this long skirt, very long. And whenever she's her own hostel, where her flat is, they don't clean as they don't sweep the floor because her skirt usually help them to. <laughs> wipe away uh, their sins in that particular area. <laughs> so <laughs> she, one day she just, we're just talking. We're just, I was looking for a name. She now, we, we, we were just talking. Then she said, ah, your voice is actually loud. I said, okay. So loud voice, that could be a name that will fly. But she now gave it a spiritual uh, connotative. She said, you know that um, in the Bible, there were no major miracles that happened without Jesus. They would say, Jesus shouted with a loud voice. Jesus shouted with a loud voice. So it means that uh, for any event to actually make sense, a loud voice is needed. Oh, my God. <laughs> and the name stuck. Exactly. The name stuck. Exactly. Awesome. Well, I, you and I have known for many years now. Yes, and I've offended you several times. <laughs> <laughs> No, no, he's been forgiven. Ah, yes, you you've made him. <laughs> Today is day of redemption. <laughs> okay, so 
Have you always been funny? That's what people say. Oh. They say that, you know, from secondary school days, you know, yeah. there's this thing we call yabi. You get, uh -huh. when you see somebody now, maybe with a long Adam's apple, you can tell the person, ah, see your Adam's apple, we be like, oh, swallow woman shoe. You understand <laughs> all those uh, yabi like that. So people will come to my class to hire me to go to another class to go and help them defeat the reigning champion. <laughs> you know, that's exactly how we're doing it back then, you know, until. I now gained admission into the university. I was, before I went to the university, I had the opportunity, I think I had the privilege of meeting with a few comedians. I think I met Ali Baba and um, a few other comedians. Mm -hmm. So then I was going for Ali Baba's comedy club. I'll just go there, I'll meet with one or two senior colleagues. Uh, they then started putting me on their shows, like okay. Benga Denka and the likes, and the likes. They put me on their shows to just try something out. We just go there with fear and everything, we right. do something. Then I gained admission into the university. So it was more or less like a dilemma because uh, there was this friend of mine that I was very close to, a notable comedian. He's called Omar Baba Number One. Okay. He's a very com I'm more handsome than, than him, though. So, because <laughs> <laughs> so he, he told me then, he said, You gained admission into school. School is good, but um, why go to, why go so far? When you can act, when your career is just starting, mm. you know. So I had that uh, conviction. And me, I wanted to actually stay back. But you know, as a teenager then, if I if I uh, knew what I know now, maybe I would have made a different uh, decision. decision. But then, you know, after secondary school, then the only thing in my mind was want to go into the university. Yes, I had written course. four jump. <laughs> I failed. To the point that even the year I didn't write, Jan sent me results. <laughs> and, I said, and I still failed the exam I didn't write. So <laughs> I was wondering, because the first one, they canceled my center. So they canceled it. I said, OK. The second year, and I got 170 something over 400 in Jam. So the third year, and I got 130 something. And, after, and I had to tell people that. They canceled the center. <laughs> it's better they cancel you than to live life, go back. You understand? Know right? So the fourth one announced called 204. Oh, very good. That was the only opportunity I had to go to school. Then all about was now telling me that no, leave it, we will write another jump and go to you are the time. You are who know. I had to run to school then because <laughs> they were sending me many messages at home. Go and buy this. I don't tire, so I had to just <laughs> I had to run. I went to school, you know. Then from there, the journey continued. So the little experience I gathered, I now started in the university, started going for all these departmental shows. From there, some event outside the school. They would call me to come do one or two stuff. Then after that, after school, I went to do my NYSC. Then I put up my first comedy show on camp. Right. After that, I now did my master's. Wow. Still, yes. I actually had, you know, had time to even do that. But let me ask you this. Can comedy be learned? Or is it just something that's innate, that you're born with? Okay. Um, in this life, eh, there is nothing you can't learn. That's the truth. Hmm? But uh, there is this Yoruba adage that says, Abinibi yatosi ability. Mm. You understand? It means that... Um, when you are being a bee, it's different from your ability. I don't know if you understand. <laughs> 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 so it's better if it's an innate thing, OK? But um, if you have it, if it's an innate thing in you and you don't develop it, someone that goes to learn and practice will do better of you. Yeah, yeah that's true it. Talk. Yeah. So true whatever talk. you do in life, try as much as possible to keep digging deep, make it better, try yes. and move with the trend, yeah. and by so you remain relevant. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So I want to ask this question. When you're cracking jokes, do you make yourself laugh? Uh, yes. Before I actually tell a joke, I sit down. I look at the mirror. If the joke can make me smile, I know it will make people laugh. Ah. Yes. So I think through it. Like I just did my show now. I wrote, I, I sat down 
to do my routine, okay, I was thinking, okay, what do I do first? What do I do next? You know, you have to practice. You have to. There are some things that are spontaneous, okay? Mm. We have some things that just happens. Spontaneity can play out. Mm. But your body of work, you need to, you need to sit down and put these things down. Mm. A perfect example is someone I love so much and um, I don't play with his craft the same way he doesn't play with mine. It's Bovi. Mm. Bovi is somebody that um, is very dedicated to his work. If you see Bovi raise his hand like this on stage, it was written down in the script. Wow. At, at that particular minute, uh, as I, if I'm telling this joke, at, that, as at this point, I'll raise my hand like this and everything. He's very detailed. Wow. He's a very detailed wow. comedian. So, and um, he's someone that uh, we've actually had a series of conversations and um, he has encouraged me a lot in doing mm -hmm. what I do mm -hmm. uh -huh, because my perspective about comedy is kind of different okay. from the general uh, public. So basically, mm. that's it. Okay. I, I, um, I wonder... How's your relationship with your wife at home? I mean, do people like... You, I'm sure you get serious at times. But because you're so funny, you know, and you can just come up with something, is your wife... Are, are they always, like, laughing and falling out, like, because you just say something? Can, can she even get angry with you because you're so funny? They make an appearance on her mask. You know I don't see her as a comedian anymore. Uh, you just have to see. The thing is, uh, as a comedian, your job is your job. You need to play your role as a husband and as a father. You cannot make a joke with everything. For example, maybe her birthday, I will not start cracking jokes and say, ha, 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 ha. I need to do the needful. I need to make her happy. You understand? Because I tell people that the amount of money you give to your wife determines the pet name she calls you at home. <laughs> yes. Yes, because if your husband, if your wife calls you Papa Chinere, just know you are not doing well. <laughs> yeah. Because the first day I gave my wife 20000 she gave me a pet name. She called me Honey. Okay. When I increased the money, she increased the pet name. <laughs> I gave her 50000 She now called me Honey Bunch. <laughs> then the day I gave her 200000 my wife didn't know when she called me, my Lord, I'm passing her <laughs> Men need to do the needful. Extremely, extremely. Where jokes don't cover some things. No, 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 no. <laughs> okay. We're, we're going to be taking a break, but in the next one minute, where do you, how do you get your materials, you know, that you use for your, for your jokes? Yeah, I mostly get my materials from, number one, my environment. That's one. Family, I'm more or less like a family-friendly uh, comic act, I try as much as possible to like, I look within my space mm. from my uh, son to, you know, something like the day I paid my son's school fees, the English the guy spoke. At a point, I thought Asu has actually <laughs> started attending to nursery school because, because I don't know if their school went on strike because I carried him in my car, small boy that I just paid about 200 and something thousand an hour for. He said, Daddy, I said, yes. He said, where is us going? <laughs> I, have to, I have to spoil everything. I say, son, us, they come out. <laughs> We're going to take a very short break. We'll be right back. Thank you very much. So we're back again uh, on the Moments with Pastor Funke show, and I'm still talking to uh, my good friend and brother, Loud Voice. So, Loud Voice, what do you say to young people coming up? Um, and I've started to notice now that women are also getting involved you know before it used to be just men comedians now with how, what, what would you advise somebody watching now and they're, they're thinking well this is what i want to do 
with my life, what would you advise them? Yeah, I would advise uh, that um, whatever you want to become, you can actually become. All you need is basically dedication. And um, look at those that have actually gone ahead because that same road you want to actually pass through, there are people that have actually passed through that road already. So try as much as possible to watch, learn, practice, and most importantly, believe in yourself because it was tougher those days uh, to actually succeed in this industry. You know, because back then you actually need the help of a senior colleague to perform on a particular stage before people can know you. But now, social media has actually helped. From the comfort of your home, you can become a superstar. Mm. You understand? All you need to do is just be consistent. You might put out a, a particular content. People might insult you, might yab you. So far, you know what you're doing. Just keep doing it. Keep doing it. Before, you know, people will get used to it, and they'll just start appreciating your gift. Yeah, yeah. Consistency. Consistency. So, do, do you have a role model? Yes. Do you care to share who that person is? Uh, there is somebody I admire so much, and I think I mentioned his name earlier. I love Bovi. Wow. Yes, I love Bovi so, so much. I love the way he does his things, you know. There was a particular message he sent me one particular day because, um, like, I do my own comedy shows, but the way I go about my stuff, I do it differently. I try as much as possible to... I believe comedy was never rated 18. So they didn't say that from 18 plus should laugh. Because these days, you will find parents hardly go to comedy shows with their family, their mm. children, because of what is coming out from the mouth of a comedian. Absolutely. So the shows I put up, number one, no comedian is permitted to crack anything vulgar. That's mm. one. Good. Then number two, no comedian is permitted to pick on anybody in the audience. Ah. The reason is simple. The people that came, they came to laugh and not to be laughed at. True. Yeah, so ah, when you... So when you pick on somebody, the joke is never funny to that person. Yeah. yeah. It's only funny to people in the audience. Yeah. So that is the particular angle that I... For the past five years, I've been putting up this show, and uh, people come, they are relaxed, they... They sit in front, they are not bothered about anything. They know nobody is going to come here and insult them mm -hmm. or pick on them. And uh, it's been like that. So Bovi sent me a particular message one very day, and that encouraged me a lot. Mm. He said, you are one of the very few that is doing it right. Oh, Please don't nice. stop. That's nice. Please that's don't nice. stop. That's nice. I, I, absolutely, and I like that because, you know, Sometimes you do listen to comedians and they're just talking. There's so much F this and this, this, and so much vulgarity. And, um, you know, I think that um, especially when, you know, people are in settings where there are families, there are children yeah. in there. So we really appreciate that about what you're doing. So, Loud Voice, how do you take stress off? Because um, you get stressed like everybody else. What do you do? Yeah. Hmm. You know, it's you, sincerely. The best stress reliever, na a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I swear. <laughs> I don't rely on a lot. Too. Ah, you get the money where you go get now, eh? Ah, ah. Stress will go. Oh? <laughs> Even beggars with the road, beggars with the road, give cripple five million. The way you take stand up wrong, it's a shock. But I take time out to actually sleep. You understand? Uh, I take time out to, to sleep because um, in the course of running around, uh, health is actually wealth. Yes. Uh, because there was a particular day I was in a vehicle. The day I actually sat down to glorify God's name, I was in a vehicle, and um, somebody was passing an envelope. And on that envelope, it was written, I am deaf and dumb. OK? I looked at it. I was like, if this was my case, that means I'll be broke for life because I talk to earn money. Mm. You understand? So mm. I'm always grateful to God for every opportunity. So when it comes to when I need to rest, I try as much as possible to rest. Because in the course of running around looking for money, once you break down, 
you don't think of money again, you think of your health. Absolutely. So whatever I do, I try as much as possible to create time to rest. I did my show on Sunday. Today is Thursday. I'm just going home today. From mm -hmm. here now, to pick my children from school, then go. I needed that rest. Yeah. So that's it, basically. Yeah. Okay. That's good. So let's say that there is somebody watching us right now mm. who's feeling down and out. I mean, the, the truth is that not just in Nigeria, Africa, all over the world, things have changed. You know, life is tough, especially in our own area. What can you say to such a person um, to make them feel better or to, to give them hope, you know, relieve that tension? Yeah, what I would say is, uh, if you lose anything in life, the only thing you should never lose is your hope. Mm. Yes, never you lose your hope for anything because a living dog is better than a dead lion. Mm. Uh, 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 last month, a friend of mine lost someone. What happened? The guy, the guy was a billionaire. Okay, I don't know what happened to him. The guy just uh, suddenly went broke. Okay. And um, he was now someone begging from hand to mouth. The next thing we heard, the guy took sniper and died. Mm. You know, it was a very painful experience. You understand? And uh, one or two persons now they they have they will give you genuine reasons why they need to take their lives or why they feel they should remain depressed. But the truth is, in as much as you are alive, you are breathing. Hmm, there is still hope. You can, you, you, God can actually turn situations around overnight. Yes. You understand? No matter what you are going through, there are people going through worse mm. and praying to actually be in that your own position yeah. to be better. Yeah, Thank true. You. true. <laughs> Never, ever, ever you give up hope. You know, that where, if there is life, then there is an opportunity for things to be better. So you just mentioned the fact that you had um, recorded your shows. When, when is it hearing? When is it coming out? Or how, how does that work? You used to invite me to your shows. He does not invite me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to accuse you on international TV. I'm so sorry, ma. You understand? And, uh, but it's not late. You know, you used to give me money, too. So. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I could get the last word in, but it wouldn't let me. <laughs> no, but where, where can people be blessed with the show? Okay, um, we're working on uh, uh, two platforms. We're actually pursuing Netflix. If we can get the deal, fine. If God says it's not yet time, we'll put it on YouTube. So we'll keep recording, we'll keep recording until we get the big break. Absolutely. And that big break is coming. That big break is coming. Now, before I let you go, how's your uh, NGO, the initiative I Care? Absolutely beautiful. Um, last year, we didn't hold a concert because normally we, we go to orphanages, we uh, conduct, we try as much as to discover talent among orphans. Uh, after discovering the talent, we get some professional instructors to help train them in their various genre of talent. Then after that, we put up a concert for them to perform alongside other top celebrities because that helped them in eradicating low self-esteem. Mm -hmm. Then we also support their academics with scholarship. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So last year, we didn't hold the concert because we uh, ventured into a particular project for one particular orphanage. So we just went there to help them renovate the entire home. We said, okay, the money we'll put to do this concert for this year, let us. So we painted the entire home. We did a whole lot for them. And um, to God's glory, it's been good. We just thank God, you know. Most of the time, we don't put out this work, okay? But we just try as much as possible to do the little we can. And so far, so, so good, God has been faithful. Awesome, thank you. Awesome, awesome. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a very great initiative, and, and, and I know, you know, the origin of that. And I uh, just want to encourage you to continue to do it and to continue to support those orphans that so desperately 
And we also need you back. Pray. No, you resigned from our matron. We need you back to come back to. <laughs> anytime, anytime, anytime. Thank you so much, Loud Voice, for being on the moment show. Tony Ebota, aka Loud Voice. <laughs> Thank you, thank, thank you, you, thank you so much for thank being you. here. We're going to take a break and we'll be right back. Thank you, thank you very much, our wonderful audience. Um, we're about to wrap up today's show. It's been a great time with uh, my guest on the show today. Uh, loud voice, we've laughed and I hope you laughed and you've relieved some of that stress of everyday life. As we close today's show, we're blessed to have a wonderful uh, uh, songwriter and musician in the house to close us off with a moment of worship. Trust we'll see you again next time. Thank you so very much. And uh, we're having Minister Caleb David to come and bless us with a nice song. God bless you. See you next time. I'm Pastor Funke. The hand of the Lord still rides. You ride again. And I'll be here. Yeah.